Hello. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have one half of Lords of Goliope, a returning good brother into the temple. With their continued development of Trail of Heroes, please w please welcome the one and only Andrew. How are you doing today, man? Hello! I, uh... I, uh, yeah. Hello! Uh, I think, I think you're, I think you'll be as, I think you'll be, you're as glad as I am to be out of the, um, polar blast, because... Well, Mother Nature yeah. decided to have a conniption over the weekend. Yes, uh, in Virginia we didn't see as much, but it was cold. Definitely cold. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm, I'm in Minnesota, so I'm used to cold. Yes, I'm sure you are. <laughs> <laughs> Not many people in Minnesota aren't used to cold, at least not that they've been there a while. Pretty much, pretty much. You might have a few. You might have a few exceptions here and there, but they're a, but um, they're probably in the Twin Cities, and they're especially probably in Minneapolis. I just okay. like pick, I just like picking on Minneapolis. There you go. Pick on somebody, somebody who's not going to get mad because they're not actually a uh, person. Well, if they get if they get mad, I'm, I don't care. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, that is that has been that has been my, that has been the secret to my philosophy. I just stopped giving a shit. I tried that; it didn't work for me. Well, you do you. Um. Oh. But <clears throat> it's now. I the last time I had you on was when I had. Only just discovered the pro the project back in June. Mm -hmm. um, how it how have how have things been go how have things been going down on the on the mechanics end of things? Have there been some have there been some significant changes or some things that ended up becoming problems during pl during playtesting that had to get um, either heavily edited or even dropped? Um. Kinda. Uh, so to understand it perfectly, the aim for us is to get three versions of Trail of Heroes sold at the same time. Not like someone goes in and buys all three, but like sold side by side. Um, and Trail of Heroes standard is what I talk to you mostly about last time the other two were completely in development the other ones are trail of heroes basic and trail of heroes advanced and i recently finished the first publicly the first iteration of trail of heroes basic that is worth sending out to the public um, and that is why it is labeled on here as buggy beta version um, on my store. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I believe there were a bunch of other rule books that I did that are also buggy beta that I did publish for Trail of Heroes Standard. I don't know when I did that. I think it was at, it was since I talked to you last. Um, and most of them are just add-ons, mm -hmm. uh, but the optional armory rule set is a huge change. Um, instead of having, it, it's more organized, it's more complete as far as the different types of weapons you can use. Uh, it, it. It accounts for durability. It has more diverse special effects per weapon, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, and 
it clarifies the proficiency a bit more. And finally, it makes it so that there's a point in wielding any weapon you choose. Yep. Anywhere from a club to a claymore to a short bow to a, a whatever. There's always a point in using it. Mm -hmm. Now you re you realize somebody's gonna take that and try and home and try and homebrew a magic weapon called whatever. Probably will. <laughs> homebrew is welcome. Uh, I I only say I only say that because there's the there's been the meme for the longest time of when naming your magic weapons. Remember, everybody has a dra everybody has a dragon slayer, but who can live down the shame of being killed by the fluffy bunny? I mean, maybe it was Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. No, I don't know. Me personally, I um I just I just call I just call my melee weapons kindness. Kill them with kindness. Yep. I like it. Uh uh. But uh yeah, the the weapons section of the optional armory rule set is significantly longer. The armor section, a little bit longer. And armor includes not in one suit, but, you know, buying separately. It includes shields and helmets and such like that. Uh, it's definitely worth getting. Especially since we're we are apparently still having a sale, and it's only eighty cents. So to get the to get the main game and the optional armory rule set all together, you have to pay all of ah uh, where is it? Oh come on, I know it's in there somewhere. Huh. It's not there anymore. I'll have to deal with that. Some oh load more. There we go. Yep. It's... Oh, you'll have to you'll have to pay all of eight dollars. Yay! Mm -hmm. I, I mean, that's a reasonable price for everything you need to play a uh, a tabletop game plus you know extra. Mm -hmm. Uh and that by the way. Just, just to throw this out there, that includes tax. Yeah, and I will put a, I will put a link to the shop in the description for for this once everybody sees it. But awesome. One, one thing to one thing to note is, um, the other day I was do, I was do I was doing the I was doing the Geek Watch podcast and we. Because of the fact that the theme that week was uh, was um, the trickiness when it comes to adapting Dark Souls into a t t a tabletop RPG, and we spent a bunch mm -hmm. of time roasting the official one from Steamforged, which they are having their own problems because everybody keeps telling me that their Elden Ring board game was a disappointment for one reason or, or another. But one thing that we had talked about was the impact that equipment has. Because if you look at a if you look at a lot of games, um, your choice of your choice of equipment, your choice of weapon, is not necessarily the bit the the most impactful part of your um, player character. In a lot in a lot of cases, um, it it plays a, it plays a factor but not necessarily as much of a factor as as certain other um aspects. Mhm. Mm you know, and this your feats obvious obviously spe obviously spells which is a whole uh, which is a whole other matter. But have you guys have you guys taken steps to to have um one's cho one's choice of equipment st still ma still matter the way it the way it appeared to when I um, looked at the early rules. 
Yes, the 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 equipment definitely does matter in standard. Mm -hmm. Um, in basic, we we kind of threw all that out the window. So in basic, in standard, the most important thing about your equipment is the special abilities that go with the equipment, like anywhere from like this this item gets more damage if you throw it uh versus stabbing someone with it or whether it's this is a higher vital chance or vital multiplier or whatever that is very important and it cannot be well if you homebrewed it it could mm -hmm. but it cannot be lessened in importance that is something that's always going to be important, except to spellcasters. But that's because they get to, you know, do whatever the heck they want with their spells. Mm -hmm. um, now, magical enhancements are still the most important part. Um, because by the time you're, say, fifth level, you've got... You, you could have a two-handed axe in the base rules is, I think, plus 32 damage. Maybe it's plus 35. And, yeah, that's nice, but you could also spend a little bit more money, which you would definitely have if, well, at least if you have a GM like me. I, I mean, yeah. You, you could spend a little bit more money and get a long sword or did I have long swords? Yes. Mm -hmm. A long sword that is significantly more damage because of the magical enhancements. Yeah. So yes and no. Mm -hmm. But with Trail of Heroes Basic, it's a straight up no. The equipment doesn't matter. Because we got rid of equipment, mm -hmm. we got rid of races, we got rid of we sort of got rid of classes. We substituted. We got rid of religion. We got rid of alignment. All in an attempt to make character creation easy and fast. Because I lose a lot of players when they have to spend three hours to create a character. Mm -hmm. In th in that regard, would you say that the di the relationship between standard and basic is akin to the relationship between um fate between fate and fate accelerated i don't know what those are so i don't know uh, i am i am surprisingly blind to other game systems and i do that on purpose so that i don't get tempted to copy this from this and that from that Which, um yeah the Sorry. the point the point is is that what is that one of them is a is a is there's still they're at the end of the day the same rule set the same di the same die roll system is used in both it's just that with what with one of them you uh, you have a um, you have a you have a simple you have a simplified set of options it dr Accelerated drops the skills, and instead, all roads lead to five approaches that are oh. going to be a bit broader than the skill okay. list. And that... um, yeah, it's it's akin to that, kinda. Mm -hmm. Um, it's it's really mostly about the the biggest changes as far as gameplay goes like i i said about rolling up characters mm -hmm. or creating characters there's not really any rolling in that anymore um the only differences that is going to have in actual gameplay are in cuz this was confusing a lot of people we had melee attack which we just called attack and that was your attack rating for with melee weapons. We had ranged attack, which we just called ranged, which was your attack rating with ranged weapons. And then we had casting accuracy, which was any spell. Same thing. 
Um, or at least most spells. There are some spells that lay that listed in there that they don't require it. Anyway, beyond the point. So we got rid of all that and just went pre with precision. That is the main... It, with precision and instead of three different types of damage, we now just have physical damage and then the spell damage as listed by the spell. Mm -hmm. Now you can change those spells and their spell and their spell damages. You can still power up the spells, but it's the spell damage or physical damage. And that's a huge change. But it also kind of for for me seems a little small because you still have the the biggest thing that was tripping people up was defense and armor. And I have not gotten rid of I have not simplified that based on the the uh suggestions of the people that I've showed it to. They're like if you get rid of defense and either defense or armor, it's no longer a trail of heroes. Yeah. Um so I've left that in there, but gameplay wise, it's basically the precision and the attack and the damage types. And then the rest of the changes are either leveling up or character creation. Like, if you're really, really familiar with Trail of Heroes Standard, you can level up a seven person party in five minutes. I've done it. I timed myself. But I'm about as most I'm about as familiar with it as it gets. Mm -hmm. And with basic, you can do that. You can create a party as long as you know what your party is, what you want with your party. You can create a party in five minutes and then you can level them up in two. It's... So big difference there. And that's even if you're not familiar with the rules. Not many choices, and the choices do matter, and you do get the option of multiclassing, but it's not something that you have to worry about every level, sorta. Um, oh, one big change that you should know about Trail of Heroes Basic, and he hasn't asked this yet, but he's going to want me to, or want me to answer, um, is that... I didn't think to beginning players of tabletop RPGs that the standard agreed upon way of doing spell levels was reasonable. Like, you know, you have to get to third level to use a second level spell. You have to get to fifth level to use a third level spell. It didn't make sense to me. And it doesn't make sense to a lot of the people that I introduced to games like this. So what I did is every level you get a new level of spells. At first level, you get first level spells. At second level, you get second. At third, at third. So, and so on. And it goes up to, I think, 15th level spells with a maximum level before legendary being 20. So you still get to use those top spells in leveling up. Um, and I also... Because of the way I was doing character creation, I had to get rid of this is a mage spell versus this is a druid spell. Any spell can be picked up by any class or adventuring style is what I called them. Any adventuring style can pick up any spell as long as they get spells to cast. Mm -hmm. Which might... Might be for the best because um, there. I've talked about a future-proofing issue that ends up happening with class-specific spell lists, where if you end up adding if you end up adding spells in future support, you end up with the, you end up with the issue of of spe you end up with the issue of you're at say you add a new spell in in a supplement for a for a game then you have to figure out okay what classes are going to get this spell yeah <laughs> and, i ran at, i ran into that with the mana manual mm -hmm. and so 
So, um, yeah, the it does matter, though, in a very weird way when you pick what adventuring style. And let's see if I can explain this again in, a, in clear words without looking up where I wrote it. Um, so let's say you have body types. Yeah, yeah, body types replaced races as far as what you get bonuses for what you look like how what you're built like and all that stuff that's body types now um mostly to avoid the whole races versus species versus whatever you want to do thing um but let's say you get big and tall body type they don't get any spells just by being them then you pick Berserker is your adventuring style. Mm -hmm. They don't get any spells either. That's fine. Well, how about the second level? You choose Archmage for some weird reason as your adventuring style. And that's how you multiclass, by the way, is just pick a different adventuring style at a different level. Um, well, that comes with a conundrum. You're a second level character... But you're only one level of Archmage. What level spell do you get is available to you? And the way I solved it is effective character level is effective character level, not effective adventuring style level. So what I mean by that is you can still pick anything from first or second level spells. Then let's say you go third and fourth back into Berserker, and then, yeah, fifth back into Archmage. You can, again, you can pick from fifth to first. Mm -hmm. um, which, which adds a little bit of strategy, and it makes you think a little bit more. And I think that's what, that was dire, that was in dire need in this game, because... There was less strategy, less thought put into creating a character. This is what I meant by if you know what you want to do with that character, it's fast. Because if you can figure out what you want to do with that character, or have a good idea at least, you don't have to do things like, you know, plan out the whole character. I, I don't, yeah, don't do that. But, well, unless you want to. But, um, what you can do or what you do need to do is have an idea of the different classes and the different build you want to t builds you want to take eventually and then be cognizant of that as you level up mm -hmm. now with with that in mind i i know that Pre previously, we had previously when I had you on, we had talked about some of the classes and and the idea of the specialty classes. Is that mm -hmm. largely consistent with this shift to adventuring styles, or as or as some of the stuff that was in the class system from before had had to get dropped because it wasn't compatible? Uh, the specialty classes are gone because they were too complicated. I'm trying to make this as basic as possible without making it boring. Um, I, I wanted there to be customization and replayability, but I didn't want it to cause a headache. And the specialty classes were unnecessarily a headache, especially since that was the main way you could almost multi-class in that system. And since we have multi-classing in basic, why use something that was just there to be sort of like multi-class? Uh, <clears throat> and not only that, but there were prereq prerequisites that would not have meshed with basic anyway. So there's a number of reasons I dropped specialty classes, but I did drop specialty classes in basic. And 
eventually someday I'm going to talk to people about advanced, but right now that is so in development and so crazy. I, I I'm not even going to talk about advanced. <laughs> it's just it it can't be seen by the public. Put it away. Which is um, fa- which is fair. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, in fact, I'm thinking of a major overhaul that I'm pondering, that I was pondering earlier today. Um, but anyway. So, that's, that's the deal with specialty classes. Um, basic is almost a different game, and so is advanced. Which is why I feel comfortable with the idea of putting them all out there at the same time. They're really different games for different people. Different target audiences, completely. Um, And, yeah. So... Given, given that, I'm get, I'm guessing that multi that when it comes to multi classing, that's something that has been talked about, but not, but nothing concrete, nothing concrete anytime soon. Uh, with with standard, I gave up on the idea because there were things I would have to completely mess with that I really liked. I don't remember what it was, but there was one thing that I would have had to completely redo that I really wanted it to stay that way. Um, so I, I do not, I don't think multi-classing will ever be in the future for standard. But for basic and advanced, there's definitely ways to multi-class. I'm get, given, the, given that um, we've we talked about the difference between Ba- between base between um basic and standard what would be the what would be the key things to keep in mind difference difference wise between basic and advanced advanced is going to take you at least 4 hours to maybe create one character that doesn't have spells or special abilities like thieving abilities it's crunchy it takes forever and it may be suited better for a computer game. I know I have plans or have talked about having plans of having it as a computer game as well. I'm not real sure. But advanced is like, if you want to think about every aspect of your character and analyze it for a thousand years and you just really end the character creation... And you don't want the character creation to stop. And then in combat, you want to think about what you want to do instead of just going, oh, I know exactly what I'd want to do because there's only one option. Uh, That's advanced. Um, I would not recommend it to new players, to either new players of, of Trail of Heroes or new players of Tabletop. It is heavily inspired by Role Master. Ooh. In fact, I would say it's probably a little bit more complicated than Role Master. That's um, that's swinging for the fences. <laughs> yeah, um, I played a little a little bit of Role Master when I was like eight years old. So I and I still have the books, but I haven't really taken a good look at them except Spell Law, um, because I really heavily leaned on Role Master with my spells in advanced um but from what i remember which may not be correct because i was eight and i'm 34 now um from what i remember this is probably more complicated but hey there's people out there that were asking for that so i was like okay well i like it too so why not um, I actually get in the mood for all three at different times. We have a campaign going of all three. One of them is this, you know, the standard campaign. Standard is done. 
I just have to get it prettied up and so I can put it in, you know, put it in print and sell it somewhere. Um, basic is the basic campaign is definitely a, a, a play test and we do have an advanced play test. Uh, although the advanced play test has been put on hold because I didn't catch up with the monster descriptions and, and stats in time for me to have to run the party against those types of monsters. Also, the spell section isn't done and people were running out of spells that they could pick. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, definitely in, in process. <laughs> yeah, and which is which is completely fit which is completely fair. Now since since you mentioned that you're not doing the class with the class or adventuring style specific um specific spell lists what would what is there a dividing line bet- between what spells um someone could get? Like I, most of my most of my role master experience was through um Merp but I do remember that there that there were certain broader subtypes that weren't class specific that weren't um, class or career or profession specific within that system when it came to getting spells. Mm-hmm. Uh so in advance, which is where I leaned heavily on the spell list, um, I will talk about this briefly. There are. You pick a main class and a subclass. So you have two classes per character. And the main class determines which spell lists you can learn from. There are spell lists. And once you learn that spell list, the main class and subclass together to tell you how many spells from each level of that spell list you can cast. Or you can memorize. It's sort of like it, 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 you know where you you know those systems where you have to uh, where you know all the spells but you have to memorize this 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 it's like that mm-hmm. um, but you know all the spells from that list you can memorize this 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 and it is based on mana instead of spells per day um where was I going with this uh oh yeah yeah class restricted so yes it's it's kind of class restricted but it, it is class restricted and advanced um but in basic all spells are fair game to anyone who casts spells um now there will be incentives for a specific adventuring style to cast a specific to learn a specific spell um, because things like, I think Fireball is one of them. An Archmage gets extra damage, significant extra damage for learning Fireball instead of it being a, what did I call him? I guess I called him a healer. A healer learning and casting Fireball. Now, that doesn't mean that if you have a first level archmage, second and third level healer. That since you have that first level archmage, you can cast. You get that bonus at third level when you pick your third level spell. That's that's not what that means. It's the the class that you the adventuring style you chose that learn that specific spell that level is what gets that bonus. Um, <clears throat> and I think Fireball is actually an 8th level spell, but, um, which makes sense. But, so, like, if you're 7 levels of healer and then 1 level of Archmage, and you learn Fireball with that Archmage level, then you get the bonus. If you're 2 levels of Archmage, and then 6 levels of healer, you do not get that bonus. And there's there's numerous spells that do that. Um, 
I wanted to give incentives for like a healer to not be just a glass cannon that says, oh, I can heal you a little bit, but mostly I go fireball, fireball, fireball. The, I, I wanted there to be a point in having an adventuring style. Yeah. Now, given, given that, um, I have I have to ask I have to ask one of my big elephant in the room questions and that is the gish question. I e how easy or difficult would it be for somebody to have a gish build within um within your setup? Gish Gish is a ter is a term that's derived from the gith from Originally, it, it started with the Githzerai in AD and D. It's a shorthand for characters that utilize martial and magic. Oh, it'd be totally easy. Um, I, I've I've got one that I rolled up for a for a, a convention that I'm gonna be that we're hoping we're gonna uh, demo a game in. Um. Just take three levels of hardened warrior and one level of archmage, and then another level of hardened warrior. You've got yourself a casting fighter. Um, and if you want to do more damage with the spells, you can take more an archmage. If you want to go more into the fighting hand side of it, take more of hardened warrior or berserker. Even holy champion would be good for that, or possibly even ranger. There's all sorts of martial classes. Um, everything from assassin to skirmisher to ranger to hardened warrior to berserker. Probably others. Oh yeah, holy champion. I, didn't, I already mentioned that, but I didn't mention it there. Um, so there's very numerous ways you can build your character in the way you want with the specifics that you want. Because when you pick an adventuring style, instead of it being like in, in standard, I, I should have probably said this a long time ago. Mm -hmm. In standard, it's a point buy system with everything. You don't get hit points automatically. You don't get anything automatically. You have to buy everything with points. In basic, there are no points. You get stuff for being your body type in the beginning... And then you get a small bonus each level for body type. And you get bonuses for your uh, different adventuring styles. Mm -hmm. And get, um, when you, when you, when you were talking about the difference between, but when you're talking about how basic is in point by, I, I almost sarcastically wanted to say, do you, do you end up rolling up your base stats? Nope. I figured that everything wasn't the is case. determined. Yeah, I, f I figured that wasn't the case. It was that was just that was just me trying to be a smart ass. Okay, I do like that though. In in the games that offer that, I am one of the people who is a staunch defender of rolling your own stats. I think it's more fun. And shoot, I mean, if you've got a crappy character, you never know if they're going to live or die. If they live, it's cool. If they die, whatever. Roll up a new one. It was the fate of the dice. I know it was the it was the dice's fault, not dice's. Yeah, well, whatever. Dice's fault, not your fault. So, roll up a new character. Don't beat yourself up over it. If they don't die, they live. That's an awesome story. Mm -hmm. I've got several characters that started out as really terrible characters that became super powerful because they lived long enough to do so. And this is this is systems that I didn't make. I'm just not naming the systems for uh, reasons. Mm -hmm. And now to the to that to that end, uh, I'm get I'm guessing part of the other reason what even 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 with all of this, I'm guess, I'm guessing that there you still have the setup of all roads lead to the D100. In standard, no. 
there's a lot of other dice. In basic, I reduced it to D20s and D percentile. That's it. Anything else that I couldn't figure out how to turn it into a D20 or D percentile, I made into a static bonus or penalty. Uh, if I if you look at my uh, SRD on World Anvil and you see something that is like D4 or D6, give me a comment on that because it shouldn't be, mm. and I'll fix it. <laughs> that, was, that was a deliberate change that... You know, whenever you have that many rules and you're working off of a different rule set to just alter it like crazy, yeah. there's going to be things that slip by. Even even with this three-tiered setup, I'm guessing that you do have plans to put in some sort of material for how one might convert characters from basic to, um, st to standard or standard to advanced and so on. Oh, that's a great idea. Um, I'll work on that when I finish to finish a project. I've got like 30 projects. I'm not, I'm not, I'm exaggerating a bit, but it's, there's too many things going on right now to do that right now, but that's a great idea. I will definitely get to that. And I, I certainly will. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure a lot of people will appreciate when, when you do, because, um, Conversion, but conversion between systems is something is something a lot of people overlook. It is, and it's it's very difficult if you're doing it, and the person who made the systems overlooks it. Mm -hmm. um, I tried to convert my favorite D and D campaign into Trail of Heroes one day for an event, and it took me like two and a half months, and they were still not quite right. Um, it's it's difficult, so having a guide would definitely be a good thing. And what? Well, a lot of I know a lot of people say just wing it when it comes to this kind of thing. In my opinion, in my opinion, that only goes so far. Yeah, definitely. Like the the whole the whole thing of ju of just winging it. Um, eventually, eventually you. You start winging it to the point where you end up where you end up having a completely different setup, and right. I've mentioned this in the past. My philosophy has always been: house ruling should be house ruling and home brewing should be a spice and not the main dish. If you're having chicken for dinner, you don't want to bear, you don't want to bury the thing in a bunch of different spices. I, depending on how heavy handed you think changing it to a different dish is, I would agree. Oh. Um, and it does say in the rules, it, it says flat out, just like in other systems, it says the GM has free reign to change any of these rules. Basically, they can't cheat. It's, it's actually impossible However, it is it it is highly advised that the GM sticks with most of the rules. Um and I I would say that's a good sum summary of that. Um but you know, like even especially if if you're like trying to transition from one system to another a spellcaster for instance like i have uh, uh um let's say i have a elementalist from advanced and i want to convert him to an archmage in basic well half the spells from that Elementalist uh, spell list are not going to be in basic. Um, so more than half of the spells. So what do you do with them? Do you just repick the spells? I mean, that's what I'd do. But 
a lot of people would be stumped at that. And it's like, yeah, give them a little bit of guidance, just a little bit. Go a long way. So I, I am probably going to make that a priority-ish. Mm-hmm. Um, if you don't yeah, mind I know me, I if you don't mind me asking, what exactly do, even though it's a work in progress, what exactly does the legendary handbook entail? Is that oh. is that is that the high powered end of things? Yeah, that's so Trail of Heroes Standard, and that's what that is. It's for Trail of Heroes Standard. Trail of Heroes Standard goes up to 16th level, period. Um, and then the Legendary Handbook is 16th to, I think, 30th. No, no, 17th to 30th. Um, and it's a different way. Of, you, you, when you level up, you get more. Your points are worth more. You get more points to spend. Your spells are way different in how they work. So it 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 um it is a basically a it it turns it into a whole different game, and it's your guide from taking your Trail Hero standard character and upgrading him. To the legendary status, it's basically my answer to epic level handbook, which is is kind of what I figured it was go, it was going to be. Um, I can see I can see a epic level kind of kind of showing support for obviously high levels of each of the adventuring styles. I'm trying to I'm trying to call, I'm trying to keep calling it that even. Be, even though I'm tempted to call it classes out of just habit. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it, I, I haven't done it for basic yet. Basic is the adventuring styles. So I haven't done it for basic yet because I'm still trying to get basic nailed down. Um, once it be, once it exits beta, then I'm going to work on what I consider to be the um, supplements for it, which is what the legendary handbook is for Trail of Heroes standard. And I'm starting to realize that I'm probably going to need to change their names more than just basic standard advanced. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's almost as bad as our old um, name for the whole package which was uh i think it was our company is lords of galape and everything was called heroes of galape and everyone was confusing the two it was a disaster so i rebranded the game since it would be you know more difficult to rebrand the company and i still will say heroes of galape sometimes because that was only a couple years ago, and I mean, I've been working on this game since 20 years ago. So. That's okay. It's been rebranded before. I don't even remember what the, re- what the original title was. Horrible. Uh Every artist is their own worst critic, as the old wisdom goes. Uh, it was it was genuinely horrible. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I was in sixth grade. What do you expect? <laughs> but um, yeah, I I probably said this in the last interview, but this this game, this whole thing started as a math project. Mm-hmm. So, um, it was. It was uh, it was something that was like, you know what? I can't just let it go at this. I got an A, but I can't just let it go at this. And I never did. Um. So, do you have any more questions about yep. basic? Um. I think that I think the next question is what what do you have planned for? For the for down the road in terms of its development, in ter- in terms of basic, mm-hmm. 
Um, that depends on what people say. Uh, I do have some discussion boards on my World Anvil that I put the uh, SRD on. Um, and there's a few things I would actually like feedback on that I started a discussion of. Um, one of them is, well, oddly enough that I'm on this show and with the introduction, I don't drink alcohol. So the fact that I built a whole system of a, a, a whole rule section for alcoholic drinks is a bit odd and i'm probably not going to be anywhere near right with some of these things because i've you know i've never even been drunk so if people could correct me on that like there's some things i don't want to correct you on and it says it right there percentages don't give me don't give me feedback on percentages i know the math i know you can't have over a hundred percent of something just it was magic was involved. That's all I say. Um, <laughs> and then the toxins. Now, there's some things on there that I know are incorrect, and I will probably change them at some point. Um, that That is definitely something that I'm thinking about changing. Mm -hmm. um, like, the difference between poison and venom was not known to me at the time that I started working on that. So there's a lot of what should be venoms called poison. And there's a lot of uh, incorrect ways to be um, poisoned or in envenomed. Is that the right word? Oh. But, um, so... It's it's a little off too. Right now I'm just, you know, sweeping it under the rug of, you know, the average person doesn't know in this world, so they call it this and they call it that. But there's definitely things in there that I don't know. And I'm going to change the things that I don't know, and I'd love feedback for what I don't know that what is wrong that I don't know. Or what I what I don't know that is wrong. Something like that. Um, so those things, the drinks and the toxins are definitely in the works. Um, another thing that I'm doing for basic, and as you can see, this is all about polishing it up at this point. I like the system. I need to polish it up. And then I'm going to do supplements like sort of uh, similar supplements to standard except different. Um, so the other things I'm going to do to polish up the SRD, which is what I'm focusing on first mm -hmm. is I have to get the links right. So far, I just put up all the articles on world anvil. I have not linked all of them to the correct spot. Um, they're all ac accessible, accessible. They're all accessible. Mm -hmm. It's just once you go to, um, you know, uh, oh, be quiet. Not you. There we go. Let's you let's say you go to humans, the human um section on here. Uh, there's right now. There's a whole list of links on there where it links it to different articles that it mentions or that it refers to something that you need to see the other article to understand this. Um, but it, it stops about halfway through the monsters, maybe. And that's just not good. So I'm going to add, I'm going to polish that up and make it, easier to tell what these rules are my real hope is that people will take the srd and they'll play up to the maximum level of at least the spells 
Um, the SRD does go all the way to 20th, but the spells only go to 9th. That was done for a reason that I will not say, but it was done on purpose. And I even noted in there that you may want to change some things after 9th level, just because it, it none of the monster stats for past 9th level take into account that you no longer get 10th or 11th or 12th level spells. Um, so I'm going to deal with polishing that up. Maybe I might extend it very limited past 9th level so you can get some uh, some 10th, 11th, 12th and so on spells. Mm -hmm. Not really sure. Um, but if people could tell me, I'm I'm, I'm really at a at a at a figuring it out phase. If people could tell me what they think would be good to to add to, what would be good to um, polish up a bit, you know. And also, we're we're looking we're looking to incentivize people to to play test this thing because I mean it is a beta. It needs playtesting. So, like, we're working on coming up with incentives to playtest. That was actually what we were supposed to do last time we met, my partner and I. So, it, we were supposed to do that, and we didn't, because we didn't get to it. But I'm thinking things like free merch or... A discount on things or something like that. Um, so, yeah, that if if people could let us know what they want us to work on, that would be an, a huge help. Because it, it, up until this point, I've had to guess what people like and what people want based on their comments on the internet to other people's systems. And that's just never the ideal situation. Because I want to know what they think about my system, not a system, excuse me, that is similar to my system. That's that certainly makes sense, and I will be looking forward to seeing how it develops with time. But with all that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time to come back to the te to the temple and enjoy the interesting times that happened around that happened around here ev every week. And. Once again, anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often okay. say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> yeah. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. Oh, and thanks thanks to you for uh for having us mm -hmm. or me again. Mm -hmm. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty everybody. <laughs>